Well, as you can see, I'm going to try and talk to you about what it means to be a foster carer. Uh, and as in an ideal world, you wouldn't need anybody like me. You wouldn't need anybody to do the adoption. You wouldn't need anybody to take on somebody else's children and work uh, with those. So, what makes a foster parent? Where do they come from? How do we make them? I am the eldest of nine children. By the age of six, I was regularly caring for four of my siblings, that was bottle feeding them, uh, changing nappies, um, and they were the old uh, Terry Tailing ones, for those of you old enough to remember them, not the modern day stick-ons and disposables that you throw away in the bin. You still had to wash the old Terry Tailing ones, stick them in a bucket as they were. But my school days were fine. As a, as a junior school, I attended regularly, I had no problem playing football most of the time. By the time I got to secondary school though, uh, being the 60s, nobody could afford to give me a proper uniform. So often I didn't attend and when I did, I was called smelly and all sorts, I was the odd one out. But as it says there, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I learned to live with that, I learned to work with them. So at 16 I left home and I joined the army. I trained to become a long range desert sniper. Well, that's uh, another funny name for being a tank commander. It keeps you occupied, uh, and whenever you tell people you do that, they don't understand. <laughs> but for 14 years or so, I continued in the army, and my circumstances changed. We had to come back to the UK, and during that time, I got married, lucky enough, uh, but we went back to Germany. Now, in Germany at that time, it was the old forgotten war of the Cold War. I spent uh, many a day off on exercise, off in Canada, uh, out in various trading areas in Germany, and I even uh, managed to have children during that period, although I think they're still mine. Um, by the time we got back to the UK, uh, we had to, or I had to look for another occupation, so I decided to become a police officer. That was about the only other thing I thought I could do at the time. And it was during this period, whilst um, we were back in the UK that we decided we would look at helping out other families and we took on what was called then shared care. Shared care was looking after various dis disabled children and we would do that over a weekend and this went on for a couple of years. It involved also my own two sons because they were involved with it. They took part and they, t they helped out and eventually this led us down the road to about 12 years ago when we came across an independent fostering agency, uh, a not-for-profit not agency, and we decided that we would go into looking at working with children on a full-time basis. So for over 20 years we've been doing this now, and the children that we've had are not very many, because what we've had, we've kept for quite some time. The first young lad we had was a young lad called Ryan. Ryan used to come home at weekends to us, and on that weekend, after taking one day to go and see his mum, and on another day go and see his dad, this led for a very troubled young man who never knew um, which way was up half the time. And Monday mornings, off he'd go back to school. These 12 years have flown by, as I said earlier on there, or showed earlier on there, that Irish philosopher Ronan Keating said life's a roller coaster uh, and life has been like that ever since we've been into fostering. You go through a hell of a lot of emotions. You're up, you're down. Many nights we cried. But for everything that you do, the children themselves go through exactly the same thing. That joy, that despair. But the pride that you get when you see them achieve something is fantastic. They do have heightened feelings, of course, because whilst they are with you, they're not with their own parents. All that is going through their mind all the time. We've now got an alley. She was 15 yesterday and had an absolutely fantastic day uh, as a family. She's been with us since she was seven. And God willing, she'll be with us another three years. We're not the only ones who foster. We've got two fabulous sons. They take their turn, they do their part, and they look after them with us. 
Uh, without our Ali, it wouldn't be the same, I've got to say. She has been uh, an absolute dream to work with. So uh, that's me done. Thank Bravo. you.